Let's debunk some rumors about CPI. What's going on, everyone? This is Andrew O'Connell with Pristine Capital. The S&P 500 finished up today up 2.1%. Huge move. NASDAQ QQQ finished up 2.79%. Our IWM small caps up 2.86%. Dogs of the Dow are the big laggards for today. They were only up 1.61%. And our ARK Innovation ETF was up a whopping 7.37%. Look at this. This is the first day where we had a huge volatility crush across the board. Almost all of these indices closed towards the very tippy top end of their day's range. We had very strong breadth across the board. We had up volume of 92.4%. Our trend model flipped to a plus one right on the open. And these are just massive moves. And why did this occur? Because of the CPI report that came out today. So let's take a look at the data. So we have, of course, our core CPI and we have our non-core CPI. So we take a look here, the core inflation rate month over month was a 0.3% rate, and that was a deceleration from the prior month, which was a 0.7% inflation rate. And then if you take non-core inflation, there was actually a 0% inflation rate month over month compared to 1.3% in the prior month. Now, here's where a lot of players got lost in the sauce today. I'm not going to lie. I saw some dreadful takes on this. Plenty of memes, like all this stuff. Like, for instance, someone in our group posted this meme for us today. Check it out. And this is, where is it? Let's pull it up. Yeah, right here. So this is the meme. And this is what everyone's been talking about on FinTwit. Like, oh my gosh, we, had, we still have 8.5% inflation. You know, this is horrible. Why is the market celebrating at this time when the last print where we got 8.5%, you know, the market did not celebrate it. And it's because when you're looking at the inflation data, the month over month data is so much more important than the year over year data. And the reason why is because of the base effects. And for you, for you math whizzes, you Excel warriors, I actually put together a hypothetical scenario down here because I think this is just, it's very cool to drill down um, and take a look. So I included in this hypothetical scenario of you have the price of a bag of groceries and that's equivalent to the CPI basket, right? And this is the time series of data. You can see all the months lined out here, January, February, March, and so on and so forth. And we have two years of data. So for the purposes of this example, we just assume that Throughout 2021, there was no inflation, there was no deflation either. The basket of groceries cost 100 bucks throughout the entire year. Now we assume in the year 2022, in January, the price of uh, the basket of groceries is 100, February it's 100, then in March, it spikes up to $130 for that bag of groceries. And then you can see it goes up to 131, 132, and eventually flatlines at 133 for the rest of the time series. Now down here, I calculated a year over year inflation rate for each month, as well as a month over month inflation rate for each month. And you can see really the big price spike happens in March, right? You go from hundred bucks to $130 for your bag of groceries. And the year over year inflation rate reflects that. You go from March of 2021, it's 100. March of 2022, it's 130. That's a 30% inflation rate. Same thing with the month over month. You go from February of 2022 to March of 2022, that's a 30% inflation rate. That's very high. Now, what happens is though, the main difference is you can see month over month, the basket's getting more expensive. And so you're seeing these month over month increases come in 0.8%, 0.8%, 0.8%. And you're still seeing those huge year over year adjustments. Now in our hypothetical scenario in July, the inflation just completely stops. The basket of goods, it stays at $133 from June, July, August, September, October, November, December. The inflation problem is gone, right? Because our basket of goods stayed at the same price. That gets immediately picked up when you're looking at month over month inflation rates. But if you're looking at year over year inflation rates, look, you might go to the month of July and go, man, inflation is so high. We had a 33% year over year increase. Meanwhile, the market doesn't really care because that's stale data. 
the market really cares about the month over month data because that's showing you the change in the CPI basket, or in this case, the change in the price of groceries. So everyone that was citing like, oh, an 8.5% year over year rate, oh my gosh, it's so high. You know, why is the market going up? The real reason why, and of course we don't even need to know the reason why the market went up, but it's really because you wanna be honing in on that month over month rate. So we are gonna have PPI coming in tomorrow morning. So it is very important for that PPI data don't get lost in the sauce. Look at the month over month inflation rate. All right, so that's an aside. Let's go to our normal stuff. Finviz heat map, really nice strength across the board. You can see all these mega cap tech monopolies really just enjoyed an incredible balanced day. Sectors, solar energy. Oh my gosh, this is insane. Solar energy is in our top momentum slot. We did have someone asking about, you know, when is a good time to enter clean energy? Now for clean energy, here here's where we entered so back in may and june when the market was really just attempting to bottom out every night we keep track we have a, a trend and dark index dashboard and it gives us traffic lights in terms of which of these etfs in our universe is above the 200 day moving average 50 day 20 day 50, uh you know 10 day ema like all those key moving averages it also shows us when these dark pool buyers are accumulating these assets and the solar energy etf off the lows was the first ETF to really get accumulated by dark pools. And it was the first ETF to cross over the 50 day simple moving average. And that was the time to be buying clean energy. You could certainly buy it now, but you're super, super late to the trade. It still has momentum though. So at this point it's really just like a momentum trade, which is perfectly fine as well. But yeah, for a lot of these assets, you know, you are really late to the game. And that's why what we do at Pristine Capital, that's why it's important because we're tracking all of these assets, we're tracking all of the trends, and really for our trading group, it's all about putting that together and trading the assets and you know just extracting as much as we can from the market. So if you're interested, go ahead, go to the website, check it out, whatever, um, you know, it's perfectly up to you, or just keep enjoying these videos. Next we have FinTech, which was up 6.86%, the blockchain group. This is, so this is a group. If you're, if you're now interested in solar, you know how I said like, oh, so yeah, solar, that trend started like a long time ago. This blockchain trend is flying under the radar because it hasn't gone to the moon yet or whatever. But this is a real trend that is starting and is due to a real catalyst. And it's the Aladdin integration with Coinbase and the fact that BlackRock, which has $21.6 trillion in assets on its platform, is now going to be offering that platform for institutional crypto players. So it's pretty phenomenal stuff. And we have some uh, trades on in that group. Biotech up big, really everything just up, you know, super big today. Style factors, best performing style factor was high beta of 3.72%. And you can see the small caps were up big as well, up 2.64%. The growth style factor was up 2.6%. And let's take a look here. So let's also talk about, you know, we'll go into the trades in a moment, but look at what happened to the dollar today. The dollar index, this is important. Look at this. The dollar index is pretty much breaking this super mega bullish trend it's been in. This is very important for emerging market assets and actually international markets. A lot of these countries in Europe, they were really getting hit by inflation because not only is the price of goods going up, but because the dollar was so strong, if they needed to buy in dollars, their local currency wouldn't buy them as much. So they were really getting smoked by inflation on multiple fronts. And this is good that we just put in this big bearish candle for the dollar index. Of course, we're going to have to see what happens with PPI tomorrow. And that'll determine if the dollar index can really just, you know, flop over and die. But for that reason, that's why we did add to some emerging market assets today in our trading account. So let's keep it moving here. Let's go over to the S&P 500. And let's just talk about these indices. And we'll bring up another key discussion point from today. So the S&P 500. Remember, we had been consolidating for about two weeks. And remember, when we were super overbought, there's a lot of risk, right? You're super extended from the key moving averages. Once you consolidate though, and you put in that structure, you know, it's tough to argue with the move to the upside like this. You know, we did put in the consolidation that even the 20 day simple moving average was getting pretty close to price. We pulled back to that 10 day EMA and we got the good news. So the good news, like, 
think about the big picture and the big picture is you know let me just uh go over here so you can see me so in the big picture really what's been the major issue this year for a lot of these asset managers the main issue has been oh my gosh inflation is so high and that means the federal reserve has to raise interest rates it means if the economy enters the you know enters the abyss there's no hope for the markets so that was really the big problem and the more the fed has tight monetary policy things start breaking within the financial system like it's just not a good thing at all and so that's been a major catalyst for a big market downturn the market's been down you know 20 30 a lot of growth assets they've been down 80 percent on the lows uh, crypto assets down 70 to 80 percent there's been some huge carnage here so now that we got this catalyst that hey this inflation problem of course it's not gone it could always just rear its ugly head again or whatever but we effectively had you know zero inflation over this past month which is something we could not say for the other months in 2022 so when that happens like if you're just looking at like a five minute chart for like overbought signals or like an hourly chart or even a daily chart you're going to get that overbought signal if you're acting on that and you don't manage your risk properly you can really get your face ripped off because these large institutions the vanguards the black rocks the millenniums the you know all these different asset managers that have so much money trust me when i say they are not looking at the five minute chart when they're deploying their capital they're not looking at an hourly chart they're they're just not doing that you know they're looking at the big macroeconomic catalyst that is really just put everyone on the sidelines the entire year so i definitely see like trading overbought and oversold signals it can be a very effective trading strategy but that trading strategy lends itself to a very high win rate but when you take losses those losses are going to be big because pretty much if you're trading overbought and oversold signals you're going to get caught on the wrong end of every trend reversal and we know that assets trend so if you trade those signals it is just important that you have really tight risk parameters that way when a trend actually reverses you don't get you know completely destroyed or anything like that so with that let's zoom out to the weekly chart of the s p 500 so we can get a feel for where we are because look if we if we go to like the hourly chart it's like oh my gosh like we're getting up there i was even charting this i was about to take an intraday short if we got to this 42 21 level um, but yeah, like you look at it and you go, man, this thing's really moving up high. Same thing if you go to like a five minute chart, this thing looks like it's on Pluto, right? Like look at, this is the daily value area. Look how high we got above the daily value area. Like if you're that five minute trader, you go, oh my gosh, it's over, over bottom shorting. Like these institutions just don't care. Um, so let's go to the weekly chart because this really is like the more applicable if it's like a big institution that's trying to deploy some capital on the weekly chart you can see like we still have a lot of carnage in the market and i want to point out to you and thank you so much for watching these videos you guys are all awesome um this 4184 spot 25 level this is key we've interacted with this level i counted it out i put a tweet out i put x's on all of these times that we've interacted with that level it's been about nine times so you can see all the times we sliced through it all the times it functioned as support functioned as resistance and it really just goes to show like this is a big level and i'll, I'll show you here as well so this is in our discord and this was posted here so look at all these x's like this is a very key level it's the yearly point of control and the yearly point of control means this was the most highly traded level in the S&P 500 in the year 2021. So that means most players are hiding out at this level. And look, we actually made it above that yearly point of control today. So of course the PPI, maybe that changes things. To be honest, I don't think the PPI is going to be that much different than the CPI. But yeah, maybe we get like another pullback to this 4180, 4184 spot 2.5 level. But it's a big deal that we're getting back above the yearly point of control so again do i think the market's a little overbought now yeah it definitely is like you got to be cognizant i see it. my alexa's talking to me alexa stop but um 
yeah, you got to be cognizant. You don't want to be throwing caution to the wind. But like a good inflation report coming out, that's not like a short signal. You know, for a lot of investors, that's a signal to buy. So just keep that in mind. Um, let's take a look here at some of these other indices. We have the NASDAQ. NASDAQ hitting that R1 pivot. What else do we have? We got the small caps. The small caps have really been on a tear. And again, Alexa, stop. And again, these are very overbought, but we have to look at where they came from. There's a VPOC up here at this 2000 level for the Russell. But when you zoom out, you know, is it really that overbought? No, it's actually sold off year to date. But that said, we are coming into some overhead supply on the small caps. So that's something to be cognizant of. And then of course, our dogs of the Dow just being dogs over here. The dogs of the Dow, it's like a horrible investment. It's basically like, there are very few times where the dogs of the Dow actually work. But anyway, yeah, I still I still keep track of them and you know, just watch and whatever. But let's, uh, let's pull up um, my trades for today. Alexa, stop. Oh my gosh, talk about like robots taking over, right? Uh, let's see, let's take a look at the trades for today. So what do we do off the open? So we got the CPI report, came in strong, came in positive. So I knew, okay, I gotta put my capital to work because I was conservative heading into this report. If you watched yesterday's video, I did raise a cash buffer. But for me, when I raise cash, I can very quickly get back into the market. I'm super nimble. And honestly, I'm always prepared. You know, I spend so much time working on this stuff and just, you know, it's a, it's a passion of mine, so I really enjoy it. But yeah, so I got long Twitter in the pre-market right after the CPI report at 8.33 a.m. Twitter, this is actually a merger arbitrage trade. It's not a trend trade. And really the rationale is, hey, Elon Musk, um, you know, my thesis is he is going to have to buy Twitter. He actually sold, it was several billion dollars worth of Tesla stock the other day. And I'm actually borrowing the thesis from, I believe it's David Einhorn. He wrote this article, I posted a link to it here. In our trading group, we discussed this at length, but basically the rationale is, you know, if the if the courts were to say Elon Musk, you know, you can get away with this, that would just set a really bad precedent. Um, the only reason why he might be allowed to get out of this deal is if they just say, hey, it's Elon Musk, we're gonna bend the law. That could certainly happen, but if the deal goes through, that deal's going through at $54.20, and that's like a $10 of upside from here. So yeah, it took Twitter, common shares, and we'll see how that goes. Merger arbitrage trades are super exciting. I rarely do them, but yeah, we'll see. But then my normal bag, pretty much right off the open, I added to my hut common shares. And I've added to this in several increments. This is my biggest position that I'm holding in my portfolio by far. I added that at 258. And then I closed out half of my DigitalOcean common shares. I bought these like two days, two days ago uh, for $52.17. I paid 48.15, um, and then options trades. So I did have to close out my spy hedge. I had some September 16th, 410 puts. I closed those out for 721, I paid 11.58. So I did close that one out for a loser. And I wrote here, this trade served its purpose as a hedge. I don't think we'll be needing it given the CPI report that just came out. I think if I were to trade this scenario again, it could have made sense to remove this yesterday since I did reduce equity exposure. And I just put something to keep in mind moving forward. And I, I journal my trades every day as well. So I was looking at this today in my journal, like what, you know, could this have been an error? And I think moving forward, like I reduced my exposure to about 50% yesterday. So I think, you know, if my exposure is reduced, do I really need a hedge? Not really. But then again, had the CPI report gone the other way, I would have been like, oh my gosh, that was brilliant for having that hedge. So this one, I kind of just put it as like par for the course, normal normal losses, but maybe in the future I wouldn't do that. Anyway, so let's see. Um, and then I added some JKS, December 16th, 70 strike calls for 1020. We're seeing multiple factors that push me into this trade. The dark pool activity, again, you know, every single night we have our dark index dashboards. And our data scientist put that together for us, which is really cool. He, uh, he helps us out a lot. He's pretty awesome. So yeah, um, the dark pool buyers, they're starting to accumulate KWeb, which is the Chinese uh, internet ETF. I saw that KWeb, it's making a higher low today. And this name, it's in the solar sector, which is friggin' awesome. So let's see. 
take a look at K-Web. And we're going to end off the video after this. Check, check this out. K-Web, this is the Chinese internet ETF, right? And oh my gosh, we plunged into these lows. Looks horrible. We had a little bounce back. And oh my gosh, we're plunging again. But we actually just made a higher low. So this again, it's not like a trend trade. It's more like a bounce um, you know, potentially like a trend reversal trade. I did not want to buy exposure into like a deep red candle. That's like a rookie mistake. I waited for a nice green candle to add that exposure. This green candle is occurring on slightly higher volume. And now within the Chinese space, because we're always doing our due diligence, we're doing so much research on this stuff. And not just me, everybody in our community. Everybody in our community is awesome. We got a nice group of traders here. And I really appreciate you guys. And everyone's trying to get better. And they're, they're honestly making me better because we're all kicking around these ideas. Everyone is, you know, honestly just coming up the learning curve and working on our games. So yeah, DQ, this was one that we put on the other day. A couple, a couple people were in this one with me as well. DQ, it's a solar stock. The fundamentals are great, but it's just a Chinese stock. So it's been not really breaking out like some of the other solar stocks have been. But this stock, look at what it did today. It did something a little bit different. We had this level and this level burned me the other day, but um, yeah, we actually got past it. So I noticed, hey, like the dark bull buyers are coming in for K-Web. Uh, K-Web just put in a higher low. The leading stocks within that group are advancing. And take a look at JKS. This is the one that I just bought today. JKS, that's a really nice candle and it's coming on high volume and we're trading right up to resistance, but really like, the options trade is a bet that, hey, we might break out of this resistance and move to the upside. So that's really what we're playing for there. But yeah, tomorrow is PPI. Definitely got to keep on the toes. And honestly, it all just comes down to how well you're managing your risk. These are really fluid situations in the market. So it's just super important that you're using your process and really just managing your risk. Oh yeah, let's flip over to HUT. This is my biggest position at the moment. HUT eat mining really nice move out of value and this one it does report earnings uh you know reports earnings tomorrow and when is this earnings wait what before the market oh yes this is reporting tomorrow in the am now for a lot of stocks like it wouldn't hold into the print oh my gosh it's like such a bad thing but for crypto miners their business is kind of like linear where it's just like what's the price of bitcoin doing what's the price of ethereum doing and they really don't trade off the earnings. This company actually has a good earnings history. So I'm not really too worried about it. Maybe that's like famous last words. You know, I'll come on the video tomorrow and just be like, oh my gosh, guys got barbecued. But uh, yeah, this one looks pretty solid right now. This is my biggest position. So we'll see what happens. With that being said, thanks so much for watching this video. You guys are amazing. And I'll see you all tomorrow.